please. Hallelujah. I don't want to strain my voice. I got a little happy last night. Got a little happy. Got to shouting a little bit. And so I'm going to take care of my voice. Amen. Praise God forevermore. All right. If you would open your Bibles to Hebrews, the 11th chapter again. We're talking about the subject of faith. And we're going to be emphasizing the subject of healing as well. And we said yesterday, because the Lord had dealt with me about doing, presenting this as you would a case before a jury for individuals to make a decision on whether or not we prove beyond reasonable doubt that God wants to heal us today. Amen. Because a whole lot of people think that healing has been done away with, but it has not been done away with. Amen. In spite of what anybody might say, it has not been done away with. Okay. And we look at the 11th chapter in the first verse in the Amplified Bible. It says this, Now faith is the assurance the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Amen? So notice that. Faith, that now faith is the assurance. It's the confirmation. It's the title deed. Faith is the proof of ownership that what God's promises is ours, that we have it. It belongs to us. Amen? That we have faith is the proof of the possession of it. Amen? Not based upon what we see, hear, or feel, but based upon what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. That's very important to us. It's the title deed, the things of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Well, I want you to be convinced that God wants you to be healed. Amen? And so in order for us to do that, we look through the Word of God and find out what the Word says. Amen. Remember we said yesterday, the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation, that they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Overcame who? Overcame the enemy. Where does sickness and disease come from? It comes from the devil. I said sickness and disease comes from the devil. It does not come from God. God's not out there putting sickness and disease on people to teach them a lesson. Are you all out there? Now, don't, be, don't get me wrong. You can learn a lesson from any test or trial you go through, but God's not the one that's the author of it. Amen? God's not the author of sickness and disease. God's not out there. God doesn't have to make you sick to teach you a lesson. Amen? No, he can switch you with the word, can he? You ever had him do that to you? I've had him do that to me. My word. I mean, I know growing up as a young child, you know, you get in trouble. Mom and daddy tell you, go out there and cut your switch. Anybody ever had to cut your own switch? You didn't come back with one too small, did you? No, you made sure you got the right one, or else they'd go and take you out there and show you one you needed to get. And they'd switch you with it. Well, I tell you what, I've had the Lord switch me with the Word, and, I, and it felt just as bad to me. It wasn't, it wasn't harmful to me, but, I mean, it made me feel as bad because I missed the mark. And I didn't want to miss the mark. I wanted to get it right. You know, and what's so good about God is, just like Mom and Daddy, once they... Was, once they was, switched you then they put their arms around you love you say now honey you know we love you we wouldn't have done that we didn't you say you didn't love me because if you switched me <laughs> well then you grow up and have kids of your own find out you do switch them because you love them not because you, you know you're against them you're for them you want to help them you don't want them to make those mistakes and get in trouble and get hurt isn't that right amen, amen. hallelujah so we left off yesterday as we begin to look through the scripture we want to establish or build a case that God wants us to heal, be healed, amen, because he's a healer. And we looked at uh, Exodus chapter 15, so let's go back over there for just a moment, and we'll build a little bit on what we talked about yesterday and move forward. But Exodus chapter 15, <clears throat> in verse 26, it says this, And said, so God speaking through Moses and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and wilt do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. Well, remember we talked about the fact that we're in a new covenant and so we have a new commandment. Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you to love one another as I have loved you. See, if you will walk in love, you won't break any of the Ten Commandments that was given to curb sin. You won't, you know, you won't lie about your brother, bear false witness. You just understand what I'm saying? And that's literally what it means. It means to bear false witness. In other words, it's not, it's not just about telling a lie. We're not here advocating lying. 
We're just telling you the truth about the matter. It's talking about swearing out a witness as a witness against someone else falsely. Okay? And so you won't do that if you love somebody, will you? You won't steal from them. You won't kill, you won't kill them. You won't covet after their stuff. You won't lust after their, their, their home, their, their automobile, their spouses. You won't do that, will you? No, not if you love somebody. You won't do that kind of stuff. Amen. If you love God, you're gonna have, you won't have any other gods before him, will you? No. So we have a new commandment that we're supposed to love. Glory to God. <clears throat> and that's the command we need to be walking in, in the new covenant. And he says then, I will put. Now the word put there was not translated correctly by the translators. When you look at the Hebrew, it was translated in the causative sense, but actually it was written, you know, or given and spoken in the allowative sense. And so what he's saying is, I will not allow... None of these diseases upon you, which I have allowed upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. 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 I am the Lord that healeth thee. I'm not the Lord that maketh thee sick. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. So God wants you to be healed. And it doesn't matter what your condition is. It's not too hard for God. He told Jeremiah, he said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? One translation says, is, there's nothing too difficult for me. So there's nothing too difficult for God, no matter how big it is. The key is, is that you don't get all upset when someone, a doctor or something, tells you that you have this condition. You've got to understand, the God you serve is far bigger than the condition you may have. You have to stay focused on the, on, on the God you serve and not the condition that they say you have. Why? Because the condition you have is subject to change. It's temporal. It means it's subject to change. The word of God's truth, it will never change. God said forever, his word is settled in heaven. Amen. There's not one dot of the I, one cross of the T of the word of God will ever change. So God's word never changes. And so if his word tells you that he's your healer, that he doesn't move or fall off the throne just because the doctor says you have some kind of disease that they feel is incurable. Nothing's too big or nothing's too hard for God. So you have to understand that, and you have to make sure you keep that settled in your heart. God is well able to do whatever's necessary to heal your body. He created you, did he not? Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, I know Pastor Kim was telling me of an instance, you know, with a couple ministers that, that we know of, was up in Canada ministering. And uh, while the one gentleman was ministering, the other gentleman you know, saw an angel standing there on the platform. And so he was just kind of, uh, he didn't want to say anything about it, you know. And, and, and so the one brother minister said, do you have anything? He said, no. Nope. And so uh, he, he didn't want to say, he saw an angel standing there. So he asked him, he said, do you have anything? No. Nope. Finally he said, you guys said, well, yeah. He said, there's an angel standing here. And the angel said, he said, I come with a new heart. Someone here needs a new heart. And he said, I came with a new heart to give to them. <clears throat> and so sure enough, a lady came forward, and she was scheduled to have some kind of surgery, wasn't it? Something to that, that effect or whatever. Anyway, she had a bad heart. And so the angel put that heart in her. Now, he didn't perform surgery like we would think of surgery, you know. I mean, spiritually, she just put that heart in her. And so she went back to the doctor, and the doctor said she had a brand new heart. It was all over. It was not, it was not the same heart. Not the same heart. Brand new heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, in the natural, you know, doctors, what are they going to do about it? They can't. If it's too damaged, there's nothing they can do about it. Try to get you a transplant. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. But God's got them available. Hallelujah. And they said it, and it was in the newspaper and everything. All over. That angel comes and gives a woman a new heart. Well, I know in, in, you know, one night in church, this is many years ago, when we first started our church, we had a lady come, and her brother-in-law, or not her brother, but her brother, had had a massive heart attack. A massive heart attack. And they had him in the hospital, had him just about on life support. I mean, he was bad. He was conscious. But they had him hooked up to all the machines and stuff, and he's conscious. And so anyway, she stood in for him on a Wednesday night service. That's why I believe in people standing in from praying for folks, because I've seen it happen too many times. I had one preacher tell me, he said, well, you know, that's not scriptural. I said, well, I see it happening in the Bible. I see where a centurion went to Jesus on the behalf of his servant. I see where a woman went to Jesus on the behalf of her daughter. The daughter wasn't there. The servant wasn't there, but both of them got healed. 
Amen. Are you listening? And so I've been doing that ever since. And I've watched people get, I mean, I, we've had phenomenal testimonies and results of people getting healed. And so anyway, she stood in for her brother. And so this is Wednesday. They're going to have to try to do some kind of surgery, you know, on Thursday to try to save his life because he's going to deteriorate and get worse and worse. Well, we prayed for him on Wednesday. And the doctors, whenever they went to do, they, they did a heart cath to find out exactly how much damage that they was going to have because he had the EKGs and all that. But a cath, a heart cath, is the one that really tells you how much damage you got. And so they did a heart cath, and when they did the heart cath, they said, uh, you don't have the same heart. So what do you mean? The, the actual words was, somebody up there likes you because you got a brand new heart. Hallelujah. He came out of the hospital, amen, with a brand new heart. But they didn't put it in him. When, who, who put it in? God put it in. When God put it in, he put it in on Wednesday night when she stood there and we prayed and laid, his sister stood there and we prayed and laid hands on her as a point of contact for God's power to go into his body. Hallelujah. That's good news, isn't it? Amen. Praise the Lord. So there's nothing too big or too hard for God. Why? Because he's the Lord that healeth thee. He's your healer. Now you've got to get that settled in your own heart. I may know he's my healer, but if you don't know he's your healer, it's not going to do you any good whatsoever. Or if you know him as a healer, but I don't know him as a healer, it's not going to do me any good. See, we have to know all this for ourselves. It's not good enough that our children know it, that our parents know it, that our wives know it, that our husbands know it, our sisters or brothers know it. We have to know it for ourselves, just like we have to be born again for ourselves. We don't get to heaven based upon what mama did or grandmama did or grandpappy did or anybody else. We get to heaven based upon what we do with what Jesus did for us. If we accept salvation, then we're born again. But we don't get there by osmosis. We don't get there because somebody in the family else is, you know, is, is saved. We have to get saved ourselves. It's the same way when it comes to healing. I can believe in healing all I want to and be settled that God's a healer and he wants to heal me and not just heal me but heal everybody which I believe that with all of my heart, I believe the Bible bears that out. But unless a person accepts it, it's not going to do them any good to have the fact that God's a healer. Well, how many realize the doctors are there to heal? Most of them are, you know. They're there to heal, but if people don't go to the doctor, the doctor can't do a thing for them. Isn't that true? It's the same way when it comes to God and the things of God. All right, now, turn back over to Psalms 103. That's where we left off last time. Hallelujah. Psalms 103 is one of my favorite psalms. <clears throat> it really is. Beginning with verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Notice that. Forget not all his benefits. There are benefits to serving God. There's good things to come to those that serve him. Amen. Hallelujah. The first thing, the first benefit we have, according to what the Bible says here, verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Isn't that good news to know that your sins have been forgiven? Not just one of them, but all of them. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Now watch the next part. Who healeth all thy diseases. I realize all still means all. So he forgives all of our sins, all our iniquities, but he also heals all of our diseases. Every single one of them. You see? See, we're endeavoring to, to build the case. We want you to be convinced or convicted in your heart that God's a healer. But we don't want to just get you to believe that he's a healer. We also want you to believe that he wants to heal you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So he's our healer. All right, now let's look at this. And let's look at where this is based at and made available to us. So turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53. And we're going to examine this now. Because all that we have, this healing, it's all based upon what Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Let's go ahead and start with the first verse and read down because there's a couple of things we need to look at here. Verse 1, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? 
See, if you don't believe the report, you're not going to benefit from it. If you don't believe the report, you're not going to benefit from it. Amen. Whose report will you believe? Do you believe the report of the doctor? Or do you believe the report of God's word? Whose report will you believe? It's up to you. God's asking us the question, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord was revealed to those who believe his report. If you want his arm to be revealed to you, then you have to believe his report to you of who he is and what he's capable of doing. Amen. See, it's, it's made available to every single one of us. Not everybody's tapping into it. We're going to establish as we get on through the week. See, how many of y'all know people that's been healed and been blessed, and then you know other people sitting in the same services, hearing the same things, and don't get healed and don't get blessed? You know, there's reasons why. See, and it's because of that that a lot of people don't believe in healing today because they say, well, I know sister so-and-so, and she was a great Christian, but yet she was praying all the time and never got healed. Well, she might have been praying all the time but never started believing, never received. Are you listening? She could have been hoping the whole time. There comes a time when you switch, switch from the desire to the absolute fact, this is mine. That's what faith is. That's what faith does. That's what faith gives substance to what you desire. We talked about that yesterday. But see, there's people that sit and listen to the exact same messages, and some people get it and benefit from it, and some people don't. And there's reasons why, and we're going to look at that in great detail. Okay? All right, so now let's read a little further here. Verse 2, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form to comeliness, and we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. You notice that Jesus wasn't, wasn't a flashy-looking guy? Notice what it says here. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. So he's talking about he's growing up, isn't it? He's growing up. He had no form to comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. In other words, he's not in such a way that, that you would like, you know, be gawking at him. Amen. Jesus didn't come to, to, to look pretty for everybody. Jesus came to accomplish something for everybody. Are you listening to me? Not that he's not beautiful in his own way, because he's full of love. Amen. Glory to God. But he came for the purpose of saving man from their sins, and he came for the purpose of healing man from their sicknesses and their diseases. He came for the purpose of delivering man from the power of the enemy. He came for the purpose of restoring us back to right relationship with God. He came for a specific reason. He didn't come to win a, a fashion contest. You all listening? That's not why he came. Hallelujah. Verse 3, he is despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, and went acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Now watch verse 4. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now the word griefs there in Hebrew means sicknesses, and the word sorrows means pain. So actually what he's saying is, surely he had borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten to God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Amen. Glory to God. So he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, a chastised of peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Glory to God. So Jesus accomplished this so that we could walk in health. Jesus carried or bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. So we don't have to be sick and we don't have to hurt. Are you listening? If you're hurting, God doesn't want you to hurt. If you're in pain right now, God doesn't want you to be in pain. He doesn't. Amen. He doesn't want you to be sick. He doesn't want you to be in pain. Hallelujah. 
Matter of fact, just a little side journey here because we're talking about faith. The word chastisement there means doctrine. That's one definition. If you look up the Hebrew word for chastisement, one definition of the word chastisement is doctrine. And the word peace there, Hebrew word for peace, is shalom. And one definition of the word shalom is prosperity. So not only that, the doctrine of our prosperity is upon him. Well, the New Testament says, though he is rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. That means have full supply, abundant provision. Doesn't mean to be a millionaire, but it means to have all your needs met and all your bills paid and have enough left over to be a great blessing to somebody else. Are you all listening to me? That's all Jesus accomplished all that in the redemption. Hallelujah. That's why when we make this statement, we've been redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. We've been redeemed, and it's proof right here in this particular scripture. This is where it was accomplished. When Jesus went to the cross, he redeemed us. Amen. Amen. The chastisement or doctrine of our prosperity is upon him. doesn't matter that some preachers might have got off in a ditch with the doctrine of prosperity and got out there and got, you know, done some things that maybe not be quite right. It doesn't take away from the fact that he wants us to be blessed. When he wants us to be rich, he wants us to have full supply. God doesn't get glory out of you not being able to pay your bills. God doesn't get glory out of you might not be able to bless somebody. Are you listening to me? God doesn't get glory out of that. God gets glory when you're able to be a blessing, when your needs are met, when your bills are paid. Are you listening to me? Now, we understand this as well. We don't have to have money for have our needs met. I'm convinced if they stopped making, if, if, if our money was useless tomorrow, God could supply our need, but he could, because we could take it. I've heard testimonies of it. One pastor in particular, his daddy was a pastor. And he was having hard times, you know. His mom would put a soup bone into a pot and, start, and put water in and start stirring it and filled up with soup. Well, I don't believe that. Well, we know that in the Bible that there's a widow that had a meal barrel that never went dry, empty, and an oil cruise that never went dry. Every time she went and got it out, there was enough in there to eat that day. Are you listening? See, why can't we believe God's capable of doing those things today? He sure enough is. He hasn't changed. If we need that, he can do that. He can supply our need. Because that's the way he is. That's the God we serve. We've got to get back to realizing that the God we serve is the God of the whole Bible, not just part of it. Amen. Hallelujah. And God's well able. But he bore our griefs, our sicknesses, and he carried our pains. All right, now, let's read a little further here. Verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He has brought his lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened out his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Watch verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. All right, now let's look at this for a moment. I want you to see something here. In the 10th verse, it says, And yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Now, Young's literal translation of the Bible says it this way, that it pleased the Lord to make him sick. In other words, it pleased God to make Jesus sick. Why? Because he went on to say, <clears throat> Seeing his seed. See, when God put sickness upon Jesus, it pleased God to put sickness on him because God saw his seed, and that's us. us he saw us healed. So it pleased God to make Jesus sick with our sicknesses and our diseases. So, listen to me, and he wasn't like he all got sick at one time and started, you know, vomiting and all that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he put sickness and disease upon him with those stripes that he bore on his back. But it pleased the Lord to do that. In other words, it pleased God to do that to Jesus, seeing us, his seed, well. Seeing us healed. 
Are you, you seeing that? Are you getting that? It pleased God for Jesus to bear stripes because he saw us healed. Because God loved us. Why does the Bible say, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave? The whole purpose of giving his son as a sacrifice for sin and to bear our sickness and disease was because God loved us. So it pleased God to put the sickness and disease on Jesus, seeing the seed well. And we're the seed. Hallelujah. It's a Levitical term. It's like the scapegoat. The children of Israel would take the scapegoat, lay hands on it, transfer the sins of the children of Israel onto the scapegoat, and then release the scapegoat into the wilderness. Amen? It's the same thing. God laid upon him all our sicknesses and diseases, and he bore them away for us. I was teaching on this in Belleville, I don't know if it was last year or year before last. And while I was teaching on this, this very verse right here, I had a mini vision, M-I-N-I. -I. And in this mini vision, a little, you know, I, I saw it in my spirit. And I brought tears to my eyes as I shared it with the people. I saw Jesus. And I saw him covered with darkness. It was like he was covered with soot. Just his, he, he was just black with soot. Just as black as you'd ever see some, somebody like a coal miner coming out of a, out of a you know, uh, out of coal mine just covered with black dust and soot. I could see his eyes shining through the soot. And I watched him as he walked away. And I knew that all that was our sin and sickness and disease that he was bearing. I saw him walk away just like the scapegoat would walk away. And I saw him walk away bearing away all our sins bearing away all our sicknesses and all our diseases. And then I watched, he stopped, and he turned around and looked over his shoulder at me. And when he did, I saw this big smile. I could see his teeth smiling real big because he willfully, he willfully, gladly bore all our sicknesses and he bore all our diseases. He bore all our sins. He bore all our iniquities. He bore them away for us. Glory to God so we don't have to bear them. Amen? Amen. We don't have to bear them. Hallelujah. He did it for us. It pleased God. Pleased God to put our sickness and disease on him. Seeing us well. Seeing us healed. That's how God sees us now. God doesn't see us sick and afflicted. God sees us through what Jesus did for us. We just got to see ourselves that way. Hallelujah. We got to get in line with what the word says. Amen. But we got to be convinced that that's what God's for us. Well, the book is what produces it. Amen? Hallelujah. We're giving you evidence. Evidence that this is what God's done for us. But see, it's all in his word. It's faith in him. We want you to have faith in him. Now faith is. It's faith in God. See, verse 6. For without faith, it's impossible to please him or please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We're talking about faith in God. God's the one that said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. God's the one that said, he forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. God's the one that said that Jesus bore our sicknesses. And carried our pains. Hallelujah. He's the one that said it pleased him. To put our sickness and disease on Jesus. Seeing us his seed well. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Hallelujah. God said that. I'm not trying to get you to have faith in this person or that person. I want you to have faith in God. Faith in what Jesus did. We're reading his book. This is what he said about it. See, we have to believe what God says about our situation and circumstance, not what anybody else says. I don't even care what other Christians say. I don't care what other preachers say. I care what God's Word says. And God said it. We're reading this is the book. This is the Bible. This is the holy written Word of God. Amen? It is infallible. Hallelujah. It's God-breathed. Holy men of old wrote as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. They didn't just think this stuff up. God spoke it to them by their spirit, his spirit. 
Oh, yeah, they wrote down the things that they saw God do. Are you listening? Hallelujah. In other words, they gave testimony to what God's capable of doing. Are you listening to me now? Hallelujah. Surely he's borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Surely he bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. Surely he did. Hallelujah. And with his stripes, we're healed. We are the healed of the Lord. Amen. Psalms 107.2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Part of that redemption process is healing. So let the healed of the Lord say so. Well, I don't look like I'm healed. That doesn't matter. Nowhere, nowhere in the Bible does it say it. You, you do it because you look like it. Well, I don't feel like I'm healed. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you do it because you feel like it. The Bible says you do it because the Bible says it is. The Bible says you are. The Bible says you're healed. The Bible says you're saved. Amen? You don't say you're saved because you feel like you're saved all the time because you don't always feel like you're saved. Isn't that right? Somebody wake you up 4 o'clock in the morning beating on your door? You may not feel real saved at 4 o'clock in the morning. But we don't go by feelings. We go by what the Word says. Well, how do you know I'm saved? I'm saved because I did what the Bible says. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart God raised him from the dead. And I'm saved. And I made Jesus the Lord of my life. And I'm saved because the Bible says if I do this in faith, I am saved. It doesn't say anything about, being, about how you feel. Just like 1 John 1 and 9, when you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But that doesn't mean you feel forgiven. But you are because the Bible says you are. Amen. First John 1 and 9 did not produce a feeling. It produces a fact. You just got to tap into the fact. Amen. And the word of God's true. Glory to God. Are you all still with me now? Amen. Hallelujah. So he's our healer. He bore our sicknesses. He bore our diseases. And with his stripes we are healed. Praise God. That ought to make you want to jump and shout right there. Amen. Are we giving you enough evidence here? We're trying to give you some evidence. But let's go a little further. Turn to Matthew chapter 8. Remember in the courtroom, they start producing evidence. Well, we're giving you evidence. Hallelujah. What the Bible says about God and what God says about you when it comes to the subject of healing. Because that's what we want to build your faith for right now. It's for healing. Praise the Lord. All right, so Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Well, let's back up to the 16th verse. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. You see, he took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. He did that. Notice, he healed. He, he cast out the devils. And he healed all that were sick. Why? That it might be fulfilled. In other words, that people might realize that what was said in Isaiah was true. You see? He proved to them, because these individuals knew the Old Covenant. It was living in the Old Covenant. They knew what Isaiah 53 said. But yet he demonstrated to them what the Bible said in Isaiah 53. That's why it says it that, that, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. See, he just proved to them that God's word was true. You see that? That's exactly what he says, that it might be fulfilled, that you might see and know that what Isaiah said is true. Hallelujah. He's given proof that what was said was true, that it might be fulfilled. Yeah, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He cast out the devils and healed all that were sick, proving that what Isaiah said was true. Amen? Whew. Whew. Glory to God. That's exactly what God's wanting to do today. I said that's exactly what God's wanting to do today. Because, see, we're having, it's, it's like we're having, in some instances, having to start all over and build a new foundation. 
because people have gotten so away from the word. They've gotten so away from the word, got so caught up in everything else in the world, they don't believe for healing, they don't think God heals. They say that's all been done away with, preachers are preaching that. They're, even, they're going even as far as saying that the Bible is just fairy tales. How can you be a preacher and not know this is the infallible word of God when Paul told Timothy, preach the word? Preach the word. That's what we're supposed to be doing is preaching the word. This is not a fairy tale. This is the word of the living God. This is God speaking to man. This is God speaking to me. Every time you open up this book and read it, God's having a personal conversation with you. God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, is talking to you through this book. He's speaking to you. You don't have to hear a voice one. Just read this book and God's talking to you. Hallelujah. Amen. And we got to get people to understand it again. Because people aren't in a position to receive. That's one of the things the Lord said to me last year when we were here. He said people don't know how, don't know how to receive. I'm not talking about folks that are being taught. I'm talking about so many other people don't have a clue. And I watched one night when a whole group of people came in and not one of them had a clue how to receive. They came to me thinking that I was going to heal them. I can't heal them. Are you listening? I can't heal anybody. They had to believe in God to do it. But they thought if they just came here and I put my hands on them, they was going to get it. It has nothing to do with my hands doing it. It has to do with God's doing it. Faith has to be in God. I may be anointed to lay hands on the sick. That's fine. But it's God that does it. It comes from heaven. It comes from God. It doesn't come from me. It comes from him. Your faith has to be in him. It can't be in any man. I was preaching in Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma, back in 1990, or 1989. And uh, I had, was teaching in the morning services just like this. They had a gentleman come in a wheelchair. And I told everybody, I said, now, I said, come to all the services if you can and wait till the end of the week. Come to all the teaching services, especially in the morning. And, and wait till the end of the week while I lay hands on you and get your faith built up. And so this gentleman came every morning in his wheelchair. He had a motorized, motorized wheelchair. He rolled in every morning. He had his notebook, his Bible. I mean, he's sitting there taking notes. He's, you know, he's got his Bible. He's, every scripture I give, he's searching those scriptures. He's marking those scriptures. He's writing notes down. I thought, I told, Jan, told Janet and the pastor and his wife, I said, man, I, said, I can't wait for the end of the week. That man's going to be healed. Friday comes, actually it was Saturday, Saturday comes, and uh, he wheels up his wheelchair, and I go to lay hands on him, and he says, these, these are the words that come out of his mouth. He said, if I don't get healed, it's your fault, not mine. And I knew right then he didn't get a thing, what we was talking about the whole week. He said, yeah, he said, I've had all the big ones lay hands on me. He said, I had oil robbers lay hands on me. He said, I didn't get healed. He said, it was his fault. He said, Kenneth Hagin laid hands on me. He said, I didn't get healed. It was his fault. T.L. Osborne's laid hands on me. He said, I didn't get healed. It was his fault. And he said, if you lay hands on me and I don't get healed, it's your fault. And the Lord spoke to me and said, and he's going to die in that wheelchair too. Because, see, he wasn't going to use his faith at all. It was all going to be based on he wanted it to be us that did it. Our faith can only go so far. Our faith, we have to have faith that God's power is going to flow into you. You see, that's where my faith goes. I have to have faith that God's healing power is going to flow into you when I lay hands on you. But he has to have faith to receive that and receive the healing that God promised him. But he wasn't going to exercise one ounce of faith. He was looking for me to do it. You could chase every healing preacher around the world and you're not going to get healed if you don't exercise any faith in the fact that God's the healer. And he's the one that's going to heal you. Even if you were to get into the, what I call the slop over blessing, when you've got a bunch of people exercising faith and the gift of the spirits and manifestation, you might get your, you, your, your symptoms might dissipate and disappear, but as soon as you get in the car driving home, the devil's going to bring them back. 
and you're not going to have the faith to resist them and stay healed. Are you listening to what I'm saying? See, you got to know it for yourself. You got to have this settled in your, in your own heart. I'm here to tell you, God wants you healed. Say it aloud. God wants me healed. God is my healer. Say it again. God is my healer. Look at your neighbor and say, God is your healer. Yes, he is. He's your healer. He's my healer. I have to know that for myself. God's the healer. Amen. Jesus is the healer. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. All right, so I like that. When the even was come, verse 16, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirit of his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. See, he did it so that it might be fulfilled, so that they might know what Isaiah said is true. You see that? Hallelujah. God don't mind doing what he said. He wants to do what he says. He's a God of his word. He's bound by his word. He has to do what he says if you'll believe him for it. Amen. Turn over to 1 Peter chapter 2. So we're endeavoring to produce evidence based upon what the Bible says that he's our healer. Are you seeing that? Hallelujah. Then we're going to shift gears and start looking at something else. We're going to start giving some testimony then. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye, say that's me. Boy, that was weak. Say, say that's me. Ye were healed. See, you were healed. You were healed back when Jesus bore the stripes on his back. You were healed all the way back there when Jesus took those stripes, when he went to the cross. You were healed then. As far as God's concerned, you've been healed ever since then. Are you all lis listening to me now? Are you listening to the word of God? You were healed back then. It was settled then. 2,000 years ago, your healing was settled back then. As far as God's concerned, you are healed. That's like I said before. When he looks at us, he sees us well. He sees us healed. He sees us delivered. He sees us saved. Amen? That's how he sees us. Why? Because Jesus did it for us. But we have to accept it. We have to realize it for ourselves. We have to acknowledge it in our own lives in order for us to grab a hold of it and get it. Amen? It's available to every one of us. As far as God's concerned, it's already done. Well, that'd be sad for me to go down to the bank and put $100,000 in there for you and your name and you never go get any out. Wouldn't that be sad? You could even go tell people, yeah, Brother Dave put $100,000 in the bank for my name. What would you do with it? Nothing. It's just sitting there. Well, what good is it to you if you don't use it? Isn't that true? I mean, seriously. It's, that, it's, it's, just, it's that way. If you never tap into it, it does you no good whatsoever. Well, <laughs> Jesus healed us. He bore our sickness and our diseases. He provided healing for us 2,000 years ago. And he's made that deposit for every one of us. But not everybody's tapping into it. You'll get people who say, well, yeah, Jesus is my healer. But they're walking around sick and afflicted. They're not tapping in. They're not making a withdrawal. They're not placing demand on what belongs to them. See, and you can do it boldly. There's no reason to be, you know, sheepish about it. Be bold about it. See, if you got $100,000 in the bank... It's in your name. You just walk in there and say, I'll take 10 out. Well, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'll take 10 out. That's my 100,000. I'll take 10 out. Well, if you keep talking, I might take 20 out. It's yours. Amen? You got boldness with it. Isn't that true? 
It belongs to so you ought to be just as bold with what belongs to you that God made available to you, just as bold with your healing. Bless God, devil, this is my healing. I'm taking my healing. You can't stop my healing. You can't stop me from being healed. You can't stop me from walking in health. You can't stop me from having joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can't stop me from walking free from sin. You can't stop me from walking in the blessings of God. You can't stop me. You might try, you might try to hinder me, but you can't stop me. Because it's already mine. It belongs to me. Amen? Hallelujah. How many of y'all are getting convinced that healing's yours? How many of y'all believe that what the Bible says is true? Y'all believe the Bible says it's true? How many of y'all believe then that, that God healed you? Believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. You're convinced of that. How many of y'all, if we was in a court of law, you would come up with the, with, you know, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The verdict. What would the verdict be? He's our healer. Is that right? He's our healer. Have we given you enough evidence to prove that? You know, the Bible says out of mouth of two or three witnesses left where we established, we gave you five. Isn't that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. We gave you five. Exodus 15, 26, Psalms 103, Isaiah 53. Matthew 8, 17, and then 1 Peter 2, 24. So we gave you two more than what you needed. Hallelujah. All right, well, let's listen to some testimonies then. How about that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. First of all, let's take a look whether it's God's will for us to be healed because that's some, people, people don't, some, some things people don't understand. Is it God's will for us to be healed? Well, turn to Matthew chapter 6. This is one of the first things we learned in Sunday school. If you went to church as a kid. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Notice what he says. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven thy will be done well we've seen five different instances in the scripture that's telling us what god's will is thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven hallelujah well it's obvious he wants us to be healed because he's the lord that healeth thee he forgives all our iniquities heal all the diseases jesus bore all our sicknesses and carried all our pains hallelujah isn't that right that it might be fulfilled with spoken by Isaiah the prophet himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And then with his stripes, 1 Peter 2, 24 says, we, we are healed. So how many believe that's God's will? That's God's will for us to be healed. Are you listening to me? Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, what we call the Lord's Prayer. Hallelujah. Verse 10 says, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. There's no sickness and disease in heaven. There is no heavenly flu. Come on, you understand? There is no heavenly flu. Don't have to worry about that. You won't find sickness and disease in heaven. There is none. There won't be no reason, listen to me, there won't be no reasons for, you know, for, to, to have to blow your nose or all that kind of stuff. There's no sickness. You won't have no, you won't be no sneezing, no allergies, none of that stuff in heaven. Come on, now y'all listen or not? It's not there. You won't find any there. Hallelujah. That's good news. You won't see anybody walking around on crutches or cranes and wheelchairs, you know, or canes, I mean, not cranes, canes. Wheelchairs. You won't see none of that? No, 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 not at all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know if we'll be bald headed in heaven or not. I'm, just, I'm believing to get my hair back. I look better with it than I do without it. Amen. And he knows how many is there because the Bible says your hairs are all numbered. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now turn to 3 John, all the way back towards the end of the Bible. 
3 John chapter 2. <clears throat> I mean, verse 2. 3 John, there's only one chapter. Verse 2, forgive me. 3 John, verse 2. <clears throat> Notice what John says here, writing to the church. Beloved, I wish, that's what the King James says. But in my Bible, I got a little two by that. And the word wish there means pray. So he's saying, Beloved, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. See, he prays above everything else, above everything else, that we prosper and be in health. In other words, that we walk in health. He wants us to walk in health. God wants us to walk in health and healing. Actually, God wants us to walk in the Zoe life of God. That is healing, divine healing and divine health. That means not have to be concerned about any type of sickness. Just walk in divine health. Just have that very life of God on the inside of you. Just every single day when you wake up in the morning, you're just full of the life of God. When throughout your day, you're full of the life of God. Hallelujah. That's what he wants us. That's what we have in the new birth. We've been born again, so we have life, the God kind of life. That's what, that's kind of life God wants us to have. Amen. When I think about Moses, you know, the only reason Moses had to die was because, now listen to me, I'm not saying he wouldn't have died eventually, but the only reason he had to die when he did was because he couldn't go into the promised land because he smote the rock when he was supposed to talk to it. The first time he smote the rock, which was a type of Jesus being beaten on our behalf. The second time he was supposed to speak to the rock. But yet he got frustrated with the children of Israel and smote the rock. And because he smote the rock, because Jesus didn't have to be smitten again. You see? That's exactly what the Bible talks about. Who's going who's gonna to sin to bring Christ down from above again? Who's going to descend to bring him back up? It's already been done. See? And that's what happened with him, with Moses, whenever he smote the rock the second time. Instead of just speaking to the rock, he smote the rock because he got mad. Got mad at the children of Israel for being so ignorant. And he smote the rock and it cost him seeing the promised land. Or going into the promised land. He got to look over into the promised land, but he never got to go into because he disobeyed God. Well, that's kind of harsh, no? Because you remember what God said about Moses? He said, I talk to my prophets by my spirit, but Moses is my friend. I talk to him face to face. He expected something more out of Moses because of the relationship he had with him. And he's, you know, he knew better than to smite the rock. All he had to do was talk to it. But that's why he died at 120 years of age. But the Bible says his eye grew not dim, nor his physical strength was never abated. Caleb got a hold of that. Caleb got a hold of that. He ended up having to walk around out in the desert for 40 years because of people's doubt and unbelief. But you know, when he was in his 80s, when they got over to the promised land, he, you know, Joshua asked him, what do you want? He said, I want the high country. I'll take it. I'm well able to go get it. I don't care if I'm 80 some odd years old or not. I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. He's ready to go take that land. And you know what? He took that land too. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why it doesn't matter how old we are. Amen. You need to get, get tapped into the life of God. The Bible doesn't say anything about retiring. It talks about refiring. Hallelujah. So you might change. You might make a change from one position to another one. But that's to refire for God and get up and keep on moving forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Still a lot of people to see out there. A lot of people need to know about Jesus. A lot of people need to know about healing. A lot of people need to know how blessed they are. Somebody got to go tell them. They can't believe in somebody they haven't heard about. They can't hear without a preacher. And they can't preach except they be sent. And we've been sent. Go ye. Hallelujah. Go ye and proclaim good news to every creature. Tell them God's a good God. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. Amen. Beloved, I pray above all things that you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He wants us to be in health. He wants us to walk in health. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What's that? Healing is in heaven. That's God's will. He wants healing on the earth. That's God's will. Are you listening to me? Amen. Now look, at, just turn back a few pages to 1 John chapter 5. Are you all getting anything out of this? 
verses 14 and 15. Well, let's back up to the 13th verse. 1 John chapter 5, we'll start with verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Notice, he wants us to know we have eternal life. How many people don't know? I mean, we've crossed, run across people over the years, you know. If you died tonight, would you go to heaven? Well, I hope so. Well, the Bible says you ought to know so. He wrote these words just so we may know. See, it's all a faith thing. But if you don't read the word, don't produce the faith. And then you won't know what you have. Verse 14, and watch this. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Well, healing's his will. Why? Because he's the Lord that healeth thee. Jesus bore our sicknesses and our pains. He healed us. Amen. God's forgiven all our iniquities. He healed all their diseases. He's our healer. It's his will for us to be healed. So this is the confidence. One translation says the boldness that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. You know, you can know that God hears every prayer. You can know that God hears every prayer you pray. You can know that. Emphatically, you can know that. All you have to do is ask according to his will. And his word is his will. So if you pray according to the Bible, you can rest assured that every prayer you pray, you pray in line with the word of God, God's going to hear your prayer. Now that's good news, isn't it? Because there's times, you know, in my life over the years before I learned some of these things that I didn't know if God heard my prayers or not. You know, it's like the heavens were brass. Anybody ever experienced that? You ever talk to people and say, well, I just don't know if God hears my prayers or not. Well, it's because they don't know about the Word of God. But you can know that God will hear every prayer you pray if you pray it in line with the Word of God. This is the confidence, the boldness we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Hallelujah. Well, that's good news to know that God, you got God's ear. You're guaranteed to have God's ear. If you ask anything according to his will, he hears you. Verse 15, and, and here's another end. So it's joining this thought together. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, so it gets better, then we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So not only can you know that God hears every prayer that you pray, it's in line with the word, you can also know that the answer is yes to every prayer you prayed. That's what it says here. And if we know that he hears what's what we ask, we know that we have. How many realize that's yes? We have the petitions that we desired of him. Not only can we know God hears our prayers, but we can know that God answers our prayers, and we can know the answer is yes. Not maybe, not hope so. Not sometime, but we can know emphatically the answer is yes. Now you tell me how much better it can get than that. To have God hear every prayer you pray and have the answer to every one of them be yes. Are you listening? Now we're talking about the prayer of faith. You understand that? Now when it comes to the prayer of consecration, dedication to God, that's like, Lord, what do, you want? do you want me to go on the mission field? Well, you may not get a yes there because he may not want you to go on the mission field. But you're asking him. But we're talking about the prayer of faith, asking according to his will. If you're asking according to his will and you know emphatically that what he promised you in his word, what he made available to you in his word is his will and healing's that. That's what, that's what God wants you to have. Healing, prosperity, salvation. He wants you to have those things. We're redeemed from poverty, sickness, spiritual death. God wants you to have those things. So you can know emphatically that when you go to pray about your needs being met, God wants your needs met. So you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God wants to meet your needs and you know the answer is yes when you go to pray about it. But make sure you're praying in line with the word because that's his will. When it comes to healing, you know the answer is yes. Hallelujah. Are you listening? 
when it comes to your children. You know God wants your family to be saved. That's why he said he'd save you and your house. Why? Because it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So we got the scripture that promises us that he wants to save our family so we can know if we go to asking God to pray about God saving our family, we know that it's his will for them to be saved and we know that the answer would be yes. Are you listening to what we're saying here? Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's good news, isn't it? That's good news to know that. All right, now, let's look at some scripture. We looked at Matthew 8, 16 a while ago. Remember that? They brought to him that those was, was, was possessed with spirits. And they're sick, and he cast out the spirits and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled by which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. We'll look at Matthew chapter 14. What time you got there? 20 minutes still. Well, let's just look at a couple of scriptures real quick, and then we'll pick up here next time. Are you getting anything out of this? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 14. Glory to God. Notice we'll start with verse 13. And when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and healed their sick. Hallelujah. In other words, he healed all of them. He healed their sick. So he healed all of them that were sick there. That's good news, isn't it? There's a testimony that he's a healer. He healed all their sick. Glory to God. Well, let's look at another verse. Look at Matthew chapter 19. Just flip over a couple of pages to the 19th chapter. Matthew chapter 19. We're going to look at verse... We'll start with verse 1. And it came to pass... That when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan, verse 2, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Hallelujah. Apparently he healed them all. He healed them there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's a healer. That's what he wants to do. Let's look at one more, Matthew chapter 12, and we'll stop there. Just back up a few pages of Matthew, the 12th chapter. Now, what so blesses me about this particular portion of Scripture is he's under persecution, okay? And he's under persecution for a lot of things, but one of the things he's under persecution for is because he's healing people, especially on the Sabbath day. They don't like it. And it kind of reminds me of some of the stuff that's going on in the modern day church world. They don't want you to have healing services on Sunday because somebody might get offended. If you're going to do a healing service, you may have to do it on Wednesday night or Sunday night. But you can't do it on Sunday morning service because we may have visitors and somebody, well, you know, that visitor may not make it back Sunday night and they may die before they get a chance to get back again. Who are we to say when we can heal, or when God can heal or can't heal? You understand what I'm saying? Who are we to say? When God wants to, especially if the anointing is a manifestation, you know God wants to heal. Because we'll look at later on, we'll look at a, a scripture in Luke's gospel where Jesus was there and, and the house was filled with lawyers, Pharisees, lawyers, doctors of the law. And the Bible says that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Amen, but not a one of them got healed. But the power of the Lord was present to heal them. When the, Lord's when the power of the Lord is present to heal, then who are we to say we can't have a healing service? You understand what I'm saying? All right, now look at this, what it says right here. Verse 14, Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Boy, it just seems like whenever they tried, the devil tried to come against Jesus, he'd just go out and heal everybody. I don't know if he would be one, you know, the Bible says he's tempting all men like, yeah, we are yet without sin. We know our personalities came from God. 
Sometimes I wonder if he just did it rubbing the devil's face. Amen. He just went out. They took counsel to get against him. They're coming after him. He heard about it. He departed, got away from him. Here comes a great crowd of people, a multitude following him. So he just went and healed every one of them. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because he's a healer. He's a healer. See, our whole purpose here is to present a case so that you can come up with a verdict. Is God a healer or not? But it's pretty easy to see just based upon the evidence we got right now that he's a healer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Said aloud, Jesus is my healer. He bore all my sicknesses, all my diseases, all my pains, all my symptoms. And if he bore them, I don't have to bear them. So I'm not going to. I'm going to walk in the health. And the victory that he made available to me. For I am the healed of the Lord. And I say so. For he is the Lord that healeth me. And I am healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did you get anything out of this this morning? All right. We'll pick up here again tomorrow. Hallelujah. We're going to receive this morning's offering. If you'd like to have an envelope for you given, you can raise your hand. Ushers will give one to you. If you want to make out a check, make it at the David Harvison Ministries. Remember, there's no pressure. If everybody just obeys God, we just give people an opportunity. If everybody obeys God, then we need to know the needs will be met. Amen. Bills will be paid. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for everyone that's given this offering today. We thank you for giving back to them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You'll cause men to give into each and every bosom. Father, we thank you that every need of every individual, every bill they have is paid in full. And hallelujah. And Father, we thank you every need of this ministry is met, and every bill of this ministry is paid in full as well. In Jesus' precious, wonderful, and holy name, amen. Go right ahead and receive the offering. We're going to give you some announcements. Don't forget, we have free CDs available of every service. Hallelujah. There's also some books back there. Uh, uh, some of uh, Pastor Hagen's books are back there. They're free of charge. If you'd like to avail yourself to them, you can have those as well. Uh, information, if you'd like to be on our mailing list and find out about where we are, when we're going to be, wherever we're going to be, we'll send you information about that. We will not hound you, send you a bunch of stuff in the mail. We do not do that. We will not ask you for money or anything like that. We don't do that either. But if you'd like to know where we're going to be, when we're going to be, we'll send you out a flyer and let you know. Or we may send out a prayer request, say, hey, we're going to do a meeting here. And so pray for that meeting with us. Amen. Hallelujah. So God can move there. Uh, we have information about uh, uh, Pastor uh, Mary and Brother Claude's church. You know, you're not pastor too? You're pastor too, aren't you? Pastor Mary and Pastor Claude's church right up here. Word Alive. And uh, if you don't have a church in the area and you're looking for a church, I encourage you to go there, right there. Amen. It'll be a blessing to you. We were there Sunday morning. Got blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, don't forget tonight we'll be here at 7 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Invite somebody. There's flyers in the back. Take those flyers out and invite somebody to come and partake of what God's doing. We had a good time last night, didn't we? Amen. Even in the rain, we had a good time. Hallelujah. And look how dried out we are already today. Praise God. God's so good. Amen. Well, let's all stand. And if you didn't get a chance to, remember we told you our son has a, uh, you can watch this on YouTube, but our son has a YouTube channel, Faith Music. Anybody gone there yet? Yep. It's got good music on it, doesn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. You can get, you can get, to hap get happy and get to shouting. We encourage you to go to that website or that, that email channel and listen to that music. Subscribe. Hallelujah. It'll be a blessing to you. Glory to God. He doesn't get a thing out of that. He doesn't get a penny for it. No money whatsoever. He just does that because he wants to get that music out there for people to be blessed. It's hard to find music nowadays that really ministers to your spirit and builds you up. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that music. It gets me happy. It makes me want to jump and shout. Run a foot race. Like David said, run through a troop, leap over a wall. Sometimes you get so happy you just run through the wall. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for blessed, precious, and wonderful people. We thank you, Lord God, for a great prosperous afternoon. We thank you for a great service tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for safety going to and from for each and every person. 
And Father, we give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them.